Paula Pereira, Principal Software Engineer at CA Technologies. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to implement and use the CA IDMS Virtual Foreign Key feature, which was introduced in IDMS Release 19. Before this feature was introduced, SQL access to network databases could be easily set up. However, there were some limitations to that access, especially when trying to update network data using SQL. You may be familiar with our network demo database shown here. You can see that it contains many records with sets connecting them. When you use SQL to access a network database such as this one, you'll be referencing these records in your statements as if they were tables. There's a structure in relational databases called a referential constraint, which is similar in some ways to the sets you see in this diagram. A referential constraint represents a relationship between two tables. In an SQL database, every table contains a primary key that uniquely identifies each row. When a referential constraint is defined between two tables, one table includes a column called a foreign key that references the primary key of the other table. As I noted earlier, this is similar to the concept of a network set, but in many network databases, the unique key of the owner is not repeated in the member and may not even exist in the owner at all. So in many cases, the data just isn't there to establish an SQL-defined referential constraint between two records. The Virtual Foreign Key feature solves this problem by providing virtual primary and virtual foreign keys for sets that exist in a network database, such as the one shown on this diagram, and makes them available to SQL applications as if they were referential constraints defined on the owner and member records. That provides a viable path for accessing the network data. With the new Virtual Foreign Key feature, network databases can be updated using SQL as easy as 1, 2, 3. Let me show you how. Step 1 is to bring up our online command facility, also called OCF, where you can enter SQL commands. Step 2 is to create an SQL schema that references a network schema. As part of that syntax, we're going to specify the new clause with virtual keys. The complete syntax is shown here. For step three, well, there is no step three. You're done. It's just that easy. You are now ready to access your network database, referencing records as tables and elements as columns. In the Virtual Foreign Key feature, we'll let you use the network sets as navigation options as well. Here's how a tool like SchemaSpy can discover the structure of the network database for the SQL schema I just created using the With Virtual Keys clause. You can see how it shows the owners and members as referential constraints and how it includes all of the foreign keys that are available to use in accessing this data and you can see the correlation between the names of the virtual foreign keys and the network set names. And to show how easy it is to use this feature, let's go back to OCF. Before the virtual foreign key feature was available, if I wanted to access two records in a network database, I had to use an IDMS extension to the SQL standard and specify a set name in the command. As you can see here, that worked and returned the data we needed. But this extension to the standard isn't supported by many SQL-based tools, so it limited the access to your data from outside the IDMS CV. With the Virtual Foreign Key feature, you can use this syntax to achieve the same result. This syntax is supported by all SQL-compatible tools and thus supports access to your network data from a broader array of tools. And as you can see from this syntax, you can also use the virtual foreign key feature to do inserts to your network databases using SQL, which was often possible before, but more complicated. If you'd like more information on this topic, please refer to our documentation on the virtual foreign key feature. We also have a web-based training available for purchase, which teaches how to use SQL to access CA IDMS databases. It includes a section which covers this virtual foreign key feature in great detail. 
I hope this has been a helpful introduction to our CA IDMS Virtual Foreign Key feature in that you'll try this easy 1-2-3 approach to accessing your network data using SQL. If you need assistance, you can always contact our support department and they'll be happy to help you through the process. Please check out our other videos we're highlighting in this series, including how to use ODBC and JDBC to access IDMS and using CA IDMS Server. Thanks for watching. Thank you.